In Rome today, there's a dry land ship, probably the only one of its kind in the world. Embedded in concrete is a complete model of a seagoing vessel in which boys from 10 to 14 are taught the rudiments of navigation without any cost to themselves. The course prepares them for the Naval Academy. Give them a mast and they're away at the top before you can say knife. It's much better fun anyway than climbing a tree and they're learning something useful. In Japan, they're preparing new currency as an emergency measure and the officials of the Imperial Mint at Osaka are well in the money. The new coins are of bronze aluminium, and after being melted, the alloy is brought to the machines in long strips. Then the discs are automatically stamped out. The coins are carefully examined and graded, and women workers take a hand in sorting the new money. It's in the bag. At the foot of Snowdon in North Wales is the village of Bath Gellert, famed not only for its wild beauty, but for the legend of the hound. Tradition has it that in the 13th century, Llewellyn, King of Wales, returned from a hunting trip to find his child missing and his faithful hound, Gellert, stained with blood. He slays the dog, but afterwards he finds the child with the corpse of a wolf close by. The dog had killed the wolf in defense of the child. Now, Gellert's grave marks the spot where the dog was buried. It's in a well-tended green enclosure, and it's almost as big an attraction as Snowdon itself. A stone inscription tells the sad story. Sad because if legend be right, Llewellyn never smiled again. Not far distant, and just off the coast of Anglesey, is Llantwyn Island, 78 acres in extent and thickly populated by birds. In the one house on the island lives Mrs. Elizabeth Jones, 61, and believed to be the only woman custodian of wild birds in the world. The island has been taken over as a sanctuary by the Society for the Protection of Wild Birds, and Mrs. Jones looks after the feathered guests. That isn't a gun she's carrying, but a telescope. The visitors are mostly puffins, terns and seagulls, and Mrs. Jones knows all their habits. The loneliness of her job doesn't affect her in the least, for she's grown up amongst birds, and she's a true daughter of the sea. There are dangerous rocks off the island and a white stone lighthouse towers above them. A faithful friend is the old donkey, the island's only means of transport. And talking of transport, at Franconia Notch, New Hampshire, an aerial railway has just begun operations across the Cannon Mountain. It's a marvel of engineering and passengers are afforded a bird's eye view of some of the most glorious scenery in the U.S. One car leaves the mountain station at the same time as another starts from the valley end, so that traffic is full of ups and downs. 